Uh, thank you, Mr. President. The accused, when he first appeared before this tribunal on the 3rd of July 2001, consistently asserted his right to defend himself before this tribunal. And he has never changed from that position during the course of the trial proceedings. A reconstituted bench of judges, because his honour judge may, unfortunately, was unable to continue in the proceedings, made an order on the 2nd of September which fundamentally altered the structure and basis of trial before this court. As soon as that order was made on the 2nd of September, that he no longer be permitted to represent himself and that he would have counsel imposed upon him, Mr. Milosevic orally expressed his desire to appeal in consistency with his previously asserted rights by him. As assigned counsel, we have filed an appeal on his behalf. He has made no filings on his own behalf, and he will make his own submissions on this issue today. The prosecution opposed this appeal, as indeed they have opposed the fundamental right of this accused to represent himself from the beginning of the trial proceedings against him. This has been a concerted attack over the period of three years against this accused being able to present his own case and conduct proceedings on his own behalf. Various arguments have been raised in opposition to his performance of what he sees and many others see as being such a fundamental right. They have ranged from the sheer size and manageability of the case. That issue was created by their own applications to join three indictments. They range from allegations of obstructionism, none of which have been founded by the trial chamber. They range from assertions of irrationality. And the point we make today on his behalf is what is irrational about wanting to assert your own rights in your own trial. A trial that has consequences for your liberty and your reputation. There are three matters that we submit should be dealt with uh, first of all. In the prosecution response on the 11th of October, the prosecution cite additional reasoning in support of their opposition to this appeal, but reasoning that was expressly rejected by the trial chamber during the proceedings. They have not cross-appealed in relation to the ruling of the trial chamber. They are attempting to broaden the basis of the decision made by the trial chamber to carry grounds which they say give more force in support of the decision to remove the accused's right of self-representation. But of course, those grounds did not form part of the reasoning of the trial chamber. What is at issue in the appeal here is the decision and reasoning of the trial chamber, not reasoning that it did not apply. 
prosecution's additional grounds, having been rejected, are cited within this response to the appeal by them, we say, as an attempt to prejudice, prejudice him in the eyes of this appeals chamber and to make the background and reasoning of the trial chamber cloudier, more grey, more inclining to a decision in their favour on this issue. The recent volt fast by the prosecution on the issue of obstructionism is in contradiction to that which they had previously stated during the proceedings, that they felt his behaviour was short of obstructionism. During the hearing itself, the trial chamber discarded that as being a valid ground. We say this displays a desperation to prejudice this accused and to stop him from regaining his fundamental right to represent himself. We say there is no legal basis which the prosecution can resurrect arguments considered fully and dismissed at first instance when they formed no part of the decision made by the trial chamber. We wonder if this court can give us an indication as to their view on that matter because it obviously makes a difference to the nature of the presentation today. Firstly, the non-following of the regime was not accepted by the accused. He did not accept that he had not been following his proper medication. This is an issue that the accused wanted to challenge through the production of alternative medical evidence. But the trial chamber, by a majority, not unanimously, rejected that approach and decided, although he contested the matter, that because it was made at a late stage, that they were still entitled to make the ruling that they made. In our submission, that is a, a clear exercise of an error of discretion to this issue. Because this is a matter that went to a fundamental right as to the approach and conduct of the defence case. And in the context of a trial and a defendant, one cannot think of anything more fundamental, more going to the interests of justice, more going to the fairness of a trial than that that concerns the right to present your defence as you want it rather than how somebody else wants it to be presented.